Hi, this is Dr. Schallenberg. Today I'm going to talk to you uh, about a three-pronged approach to Parkinson's disease. This is an approach that uh, will deal not just with the symptoms of the disease, but also with the cause or causes of the disease, and probably most importantly, the progression of the disease. So most, most of the time, doctors have a problem treating a particular disease because they're not necessarily thinking about what caused it. So I'm going to take some time here to talk about the cause of Parkinson's disease, what brings it on, and therefore, if you don't eliminate the cause, you're probably going to have some problem with the disease itself. First and foremost, uh, the cause of every chronic disease, the ultimate cause, the the ultimate cause of every chronic degenerative disease is a disorder of the mitochondria. The mitochondria are the uh, little bubbles in the, each one of the cells in your body, including all the brain cells, uh, that produce the energy that keeps that cell viable, keeps that cell able to work. The problem with us is as we get older, as we get more toxic, as our hormones become depleted, as our diets become worse, as we develop other issues such as uh, inability to properly digest and assimilate, and uh, as we get in, in worse and worse shape, there's a lot of things that happen, but the reality is the older we get, the lower our mitochondrial function gets, which means that we get less and less energy to the cell, which means that the cell can't do its thing. And, uh, and this is the, the, at the very heart of what causes all the neurological diseases, uh, uh, and Parkinson's is, is in that group. So I can pretty much promise you, and I measure mitochondrial function in all of my patients using this process called bioenergy testing, I can pretty much promise you that uh, every patient I've ever treated with Parkinson's disease has had very significant decrease in the mitochondrial uh, function. And that needs to be corrected. Now, there's a lot of ways to correct that. Uh, I, I talk about it on many of the other videos, so I'm not going to get into that. But that needs to be measured and needs to be corrected to, to the degree that it's out of sync. One of the best treatments for that, by the way, is ozone therapy. And so very frequently, we use ozone therapy to help resuscitate these uh, tired old brain cells and make them work better. Uh, the other thing I want to mention to you is you need to look for toxicity. Uh, Parkinson's disease is caused by a toxic reaction in certain cells of the brain that produce a biochemical called uh, dopamine. And, uh, and these cells become destroyed. They can no longer produce the dopamine. We're going to talk a little bit about how you can raise the dopamine level anyway. But you might ask, why do the cells get destroyed? And the reason is for some form of toxicity. Uh, so the UPPA test, the UPPA stands for Urinary Porphyrin Profile Analysis. It looks at a series of enzyme sequences in the urine. It's inexpensive, it's easy to do. These enzyme sequences are affected by various toxins. Most notably, we're looking for heavy metals like mercury, arsenic, aluminum, uh, and lead, and cadmium. But any kind of toxicity will be picked up on that UPPA test, including pesticide toxicity, petrochemical toxicity, etc. So when, uh, by evaluating the UPPA, you have a sense for how aggressive do you need to go with detoxification. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, mostly what we're looking at is the heavy metals that I mentioned. But one particular thing that I want to make sure I discuss is this chemical called glyphosate. Glyphosate is a chemical that is the primary chemical that's in the pesticide um, Roundup. And uh, I believe that this is, uh, is probably the primary reason we have such an abundance of uh, Parkinson's disease these days. Let me show you this slide. If you look at this slide right here, this is deaths from Parkinson's uh, disease. And if you look at the graph, I just want to point out Go back down here to 1981, and you can see the death rate per 100,000 people was down in the area of uh, one to two. One to two deaths from Parkinson's per 100,000 people. That's back in 1981. Now, as people get older and older, of course, the, that's going to go up because Parkinson's is a disease characterized for old people. 
So as the aging population gets older, you're going to see it go up. The green line represents what would be the normal increase right here, the normal increase in uh, Parkinson's disease. So that it normally, if it uh, was going at, let's get back here, it normally if it was going at the same trend it was always going at, you'd have about 30 deaths per 100,000. But that's not what happened. Starting somewhere around in here, 1991, 1992, things started to take a sharp upturn. Now, what's interesting is these other curves. Look at these two other curves. The red curve represents the use of Roundup. Roundup is, a, is an herbicide that the farmers started using actually back in the 60s, but it gained huge amount of popularity in the early 90s. And right around there, the uptake in glyphosate uh, treat, uh, f use in farming went dramatically up. That's what we're looking at right there. And then the use of GMO corn and soy went dramatically up. Now, you might, what's the, co what's the uh, connection between GMO corn and soy? The connection is that GMO corn and soy were specifically genetically modified so they could stand large amounts of glyphosate. So when you go and you buy soy or corn that is GMO corn, not only are you getting the toxicity from the GMO product itself, but you're getting extra toxicity from all the, the uh, glyphosate that has been applied to that GMO corn. But look at what happened here. As soon as the uh, gly gly glyphosate and GMO corn and soy uh, use began to rise, the Parkinson's rate dramatically uh, has risen. So at this point here in 2009, I don't even know where it is now, but you can bet it's worse. At, at 2009, it was three times what the projected would be. So I just want to point this out uh, so that when you're thinking of what's the cause for your illness, it could very well be glyphosate. Glyphosate, once again, it's used in Roundup. So if you're using Roundup, or if you have used Roundup, even if you live on a golf course where they use Roundup, uh, the studies show that people who live within one mile of a golf course have a higher rate of Parkinson's than people who live further away. So glyphosate's right in there. So if you're using glyphosate, that's got to stop, and, uh, and then we have, to, we have to detoxify you. But that's, those are the major causes that we can look at, and they need to be addressed. Okay, let's get this straight. All right. Okay, next, you got to treat the symptoms. Now, that's the one thing that, uh, you know, our medical, um, our medical system is designed to do. It's designed to treat symptoms. It's doing a really good job of treating symptoms. And so you've got to treat the symptoms of Parkinson's. As many of you know, the symptoms of Parkinson's have to do with either tremors, shaking of the hands, arms, legs. Uh, also has a lot to do with lack of balance, particularly when making quick turns. Uh, patients with Parkinson's are slower. They move slowly. They talk slowly. Everything's small. Everything's small and slow. These are the early symptoms of the disease. So what, the, and all those symptoms come about from a, a decrease in the amount of dopamine that the cells that just got damaged are supposed to be making. So pretty much most of the symptom relief is focused around increasing dopamine levels. So here's how you do that. Uh, first thing is they have drugs called dopaminergic drugs. Dopaminergic drugs are uh, drugs that they aren't dopamine, but they act like dopamine when put into the body and can alleviate the symptoms a lot. These are the kinds of drugs you're going to have to get from your neurologist. Your neurologist is very experienced using these drugs. The next thing that you want to get is L-DOPA. L-DOPA is an amino acid. Uh, that occurs naturally, and it's what your body uses to make dopamine. And actually, you can go out and buy L-DOPA. You can buy it online. The one I like to use is called Macuna DOPA. It's made by Source Naturals. It comes as both a, a bulk powder and as a capsule. I like that one because that's 100% extract. It's pretty much pure L-DOPA. And so you can start taking L-DOPA. And you know what? I would recommend that uh, you, you work with a physician that's familiar 
with these kinds of, uh, of treatments and not try to do this all on your own. But I will say that <coughs> it would be very safe for you to add in a little L-DOPA, I'm saying, in terms of, uh, say, one or 200 milligrams two or three times a day. Uh, and uh, once again, you can get it online by yourself, and this is the kind of thing you can do for yourself. And the thing with L-DOPA is this. Uh, once you take it in and it gets into your system, it does cross the blood-brain barrier and therefore helps with the symptoms of Parkinson's. But it also gets taken up by the nerve cells in what we call your peripheral or non-brain nervous system. The peripheral nervous system, when it takes up carbidopa, could give you some symptoms. Uh, namely, the symptoms are going to be in the form of basically two symptoms. One is going to be nausea. You could get nauseated from this. And the other one is what you call dyskinesias. Dyskinesias, uh, ironically, are a symptom of Parkinson's. Sudden movements of the arms, uh, legs, or the head, sudden movements, uh, what we call dyskinesias. Ironically, dyskinesias can be part of the disease of Parkinson's, but they can also be caused by the treatment for Parkinson's. Uh, because of the L-DOPA getting converted to dopamine in the peripheral nervous system. Now, the doctors recognized this decades ago, and so what they learned was there's a drug out called carbidopa. Carbidopa is a drug that prevents the peripheral nervous system from using L-DOPA. In other words, it stops most of these symptoms. The problem with carbidopa is it does that by blocking vitamin B6, so it actually creates a B6 deficiency, and there are some concerns about that. Uh, there could be some long-term toxicity and long-term problems with the use of carbidopa. So we like to, like to keep carbidopa to a minimum. The classic drug that's used for Parkinson's disease is a mixture of L-DOPA and carbidopa. The trade name of the drug is Cinemet, but it goes by uh, levodopa carbidopa. Uh, and uh, that particular combination allows the L-DOPA to be getting into the system, but strictly into the brain and not affected by the peripheral nervous system. Uh, but as I say, it's nice if you can get away without the carbidopa. A lot of my patients do quite well on carbidopa, don't get me wrong. But if you can get away without the carbidopa and just go straight to the L-DOPA, that's actually a better thing to do. Uh, uh, many of you don't know, but... Uh, nicotine, that's right, the stuff that's in the cigarettes, uh, has a dopaminergic activity to it. Uh, when you uh, smoke a cigarette, one of the things you're, it's going to happen is it's going to activate all the dopamine cells. So it actually can be a treatment for Parkinson's. I'm not advocating smoking, of course, but you can go out and get nicotine patches, you can get nicotine gum, and many times that can help with the symptoms of Parkinson's. I mentioned lithium here because uh, lithium, uh, the, the version that we use is called lithium ortate. There's a, a, there's a drug called lithium carbonate, um, but I prefer to lose, use the ortate because it's much less likely to cause any toxicity. But what's great about lithium is when you start these other medications, you could get that symptom I'm talking about called dyskinesias. Lithium will tend to prevent that. So uh, when I'm starting my patients on the L-DOPA and or nicotine or any of these dopaminergic drugs, I always like to make sure they get some lithium so that down the line, we don't have to worry about them developing the dyskinesias from the treatment that I'm giving them. But here's, here's one of the problems, and this was pointed out by Dr. Marty Hins uh, uh, quite a few years ago. He's done a lot of tremendous work in, in this area. And he, he discovered that uh, as you take the L-DOPA to increase the dopamine levels, not surprisingly, you affect the other brain chemicals, the other neurotransmitters in the cells. And after a while, that can be a problem. Uh, so, so what you need to do is you need to take some things to help prevent any imbalances caused by the L-DOPA. Those imbalances can be treated uh, with basically two other amino acids. One's called tryptophan, also known as 5-HTP. That's the activated form of it. Uh, and the other one is tyrosine. So we like to take a little mixture of tryptophan and tyrosine and administer that at the same time. This lessens the chance 
of any side effects or problems from the dopa therapy that I'm doing. Because, because what can happen is you get on the dopa therapy, do pretty well, and then three, four months down the line, when the other neurotransmitters are thrown into it in a state of imbalance, you start getting symptoms, and uh, you don't realize that it's not the L-dopa, it's just these other neurotransmitters out of sync. So to prevent that, that's what the 5-HTP and what the tyrosine is really good at doing. Um, also, I want to mention CBD and THC. CBD and THC are really good for the symptoms. These are the substances that are found in marijuana. Uh, if you live in a state where uh, you, there's uh, legalized uh, me medicinal marijuana, you can go pick these things up. You can go into the dispensary. They, they can help you to decide you know, what it is that you want to accomplish. Uh, but these substances can be very helpful at calming the tremor very helpful at calming the, uh, a lot of the symptoms, such as maybe swallowing difficulties. Um, and uh, and they, you know, they're really good at helping you to sleep. One of the problems with Parkinson's patients is they don't have much of a tolerance for stress. If they get excited or upset, if they get a bad night's sleep, uh, this can really throw their symptoms into a turmoil and make them much worse. So we want to make sure all our Parkinson's uh, patients get really good sleep, and that's where the CBD and the THC can come in. Uh, if you're in a state that doesn't have legalized uh, marijuana, you can still get the CBD, the best version of it. You can get this online. The best version of it is called Charlotte's Web, Charlotte's Web CBD. You can get that, buy it online, and just take it and play around with it and adjust the dose. It won't make you high. CBD doesn't make you high. The only stuff that makes you high is the THC. Uh, it's actually nice to have a little THC in there, but if you're living in a state where that's not legal, uh, this is the next best thing at that. Also, I want to uh, definitely mention the programs, the Big and Loud Therapy programs. Uh, you can go online. You can Google Big and Loud Therapy for Parkinson's, and you can see all the various programs. This is a physical therapy program that can help patients with uh, Parkinson's symptoms alleviate a lot of their symptoms. I have seen this program do great things, and I highly recommend it for all my Parkinson's patients. The last thing I want to mention here in treating the symptoms is stem cell therapy. Uh, this is a new thing out. We're talking mostly about cord-derived stem cells slash exosomes, exosomes being uh, some of the elements that are in the stem cells. Uh, but it turns out that uh, stem cell therapy, particularly if you inject it straight into the cerebral spinal fluid, can be very helpful to eliminate and uh, uh, get rid of a lot of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So, so far we talked about treating the cause, got to be doing that, and now we're treating the symptoms. But here's something that's probably the single most important thing to do and that's treating the prevent progression of the disease. The problem with Parkinson's is that it gets worse over time. Uh, so if you have uh, this level of symptoms now, you can bet that down one, two, three, four years, those symptoms are gonna be worse. That's why it's so incredibly important to start your treatment early. If you even remotely suspect you have Parkinson's, start the treatment because 100% of the time, this has been my experience, 100% of the time we can stop the progression of Parkinson's doing some of these things I'm going to tell you about in about two seconds. And if you're not that bad, if you have very minimal amount of symptoms, that what that means is in 10 years, you won't be any worse than you are now. And that's incredibly important because Parkinson's for the most part is progressive. It's true, some cases progress very slowly. Some cases pro uh, progress very quickly. But the point is, they all progress. So it's incredibly important to stop the progression. Here's how you do it. You're going to take uh, substances. Basically, there's three of them I'm going to talk about because they work great for me. You're going to take three substances um, that interfere with that mechanism that's breaking down the dopaminergic cells. So remember, there's a toxic mechanism that's killing these cells off. What these three treatments do is stop that mechanism from happening. So if you get rid of the cause and you stop the mechanism that's happening, you can stop the progression. Okay. There's, the first thing I want to tell you about is L-cysteine. It is an amino acid, 
100% safe from L-cysteine. Only bad thing could happen to you, the L-cysteine, if you take too much and you have a sensitive stomach, could make you nauseated. Uh, if that's the case, try taking less or take it with a little food. And, uh, and you should do really well when it's entirely safe. It's actually good for you in a lot of other ways too. But L-cysteine is an amino acid that will cross into the blood-brain barrier, go to those cells that uh, are uh, dopaminergic cells that are being traumatized by this Parkinson's progression, and stop the damage. The other one that is, uh, is very powerful is melatonin. Everybody knows melatonin is a sleep aid, which indeed it is, but there is so much more to the melatonin story. Uh, you, you can look in some of my other videos and you can see I get into this into a lot of detail. But, but just know this, melatonin is the most powerful neuroprotectant in the human body. It will protect your nerve cells, your brain cells, more than any other substance in the human body. And the other thing I want to tell you about is melatonin. Is it safe in virtually any dose? The, uh, the, nobody's even been able to discover an LD50 toxic dose of melatonin. That hasn't been able to happen. You can take a huge amount of it. It's entirely safe. And this is what I recommend. So I had a company make me up melatonin uh, capsules, 60 milligram capsules. Now this is a lot. If you, if you know about melatonin, you know most people don't take more than one, three, five milligrams, maybe 10. I'm going to talk to you about taking in the order of 120, 180 milligrams. But I want you to understand it's entirely safe. It's not going to hurt you. The worst that could happen is you could be, uh, you could get the kind of reaction that about one in 20 people get. Most people don't get this reaction, uh, but uh, some people do. And so you need to know about it. In certain people, melatonin will uh, create sleep disturbances. They have very vivid dreams or they just can't fall asleep or they're restless. Uh, the other thing that I've seen happen in certain people is they wake up the next morning after having taken the melatonin in these high doses and they feel sort of drugged or extra sleepy. Uh, again, it doesn't happen very often, but if that's happening to you, the odds uh, just reduce the dose. Take as much melatonin as you possibly can take up to about 180 milligrams. Take it all at once at bedtime. You can get it from this website right here. It's called uh, perfectvitaminproducts.com. Uh, they have a wonderful melatonin capsule. It's pure melatonin, uh, 60 milligram capsule. Uh, I'd start you off taking one at bedtime just to make sure you're not having a reaction. As Once you've ascertained you don't have a reaction, then go ahead and bump it up to three at bedtime. Uh, and then the last thing I want to mention is coenzyme Q10. This is an, also a very powerful neuroprotective enzyme. And uh, now we're supposed to make CoQ10, but you know, when you get to be a certain age, maybe you don't make all these things so well. And so it's a good idea to take CoQ10. Now this is a lot, so, uh, but that's what you need to stop the progression of Parkinson's. Little tiny doses are probably not going to do it. So you get some CoQ10, you can buy it uh, in 300 milligram capsules and take anywhere from 300 milligrams to five, 600 milligrams, do that two or three times a day. Those three things, cysteine, melatonin, CoQ10, flat out stop the progression of, of uh, Parkinson's so that however many years you might have left in your life, your Parkinson's disease is not gonna be any worse. Last thing I wanna mention on here is the cofactors uh, uh, for, uh, for these substances, it's the cysteine, the melatonin, the CoQ10. You need some cofactors, and also for the amino acids I mentioned on the last slide, the, the, the symptom amino acids. You need cofactors for them to work well. Cofactors are basically B vitamins, um, uh, magnesium, uh, uh, some of the trace minerals, uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, etc. Those are all in a powder I made up called Quick Start Powder. I recommend this. You can get it online. Uh, I think from advancedbionutritionals.com. Uh, there are plenty of good uh, um, multivitamin sorts of capsules out there that have all the cofactors in them. So if you prefer that, that's fine. Uh, but the Quick Start certainly covers the basis and it's also a very detoxifying factor. So, uh, Make sure 
that uh, if you have uh, if you have Parkinson's, if you even think you're coming down with Parkinson's, if you, there's a family history and so forth and so on, start early, start treating this disease early on, and uh, you can stop it dead in its tracks. It does not have to be a problem for anyone. If you already have progressed Parkinson's and it's already pretty bad, you won't do as well as you would have done had you started it early, but still these treatments will stop you from being worse next year. And with stem cell therapy, by the way, you can actually recover a lot of what you've already lost. So that's all I have to say for today. Take it easy, and I'll, I'll see you next time.